Um, how to find your style. Uh, the important thing to remember in finding your style is that it's a process and you will always be learning and growing and evolving. So finding your style just kind of means finding your style for right now. The way that I went about finding my style was to first learn a lot. I first learned the basics, like how to draw, color theory, how to paint, just the basic artist stuff. And I'm like, okay, now I've got a toolkit. I know kind of how to draw, I know how to paint, I've got basic tools to work with. But then it's a matter of like, well, there's so many styles one could work in, what, what's mine? And I did a two-pronged approach. So one, I took in a lot of other art. And it is so important to take in art from many different sources, not just one, and not just one style. If all you look at is anime art, all you will be able to make is anime art. Same goes for Disney, same goes for any style. And if all you look at is art that's been made in the last 10 years, you're missing out on a rich history of artists who can influence your style and you can kind of find inspiration in the past as well as in the present to lead you into the future. So make sure that on a regular basis, you're looking at art history, you're looking at excellent illustration, you're looking at what your peers are doing, you're looking at lots of different stuff. And then the second thing I did, so the first was look at a lot of different art from many different sources. Second was to experiment and try making new stuff. So I, I went through a phase where everything I drew looked kind of Tim Burton-y, you know? I was 20-something and trying to be taken seriously, so I was like, what if I'm just really grim and everything looks kind of gothy? Um, obviously that's not the style I ultimately went with, you know? Um, my current style came out of me after a long depression, right? So for a long time I had been really down. I hadn't been able to feel joy. I knew that joy existed. I knew that somewhere people were happy. And I, I missed being able to feel that. And so when I came out of this dark time, um, I just wanted to make happy art. Like, I didn't care about being serious anymore. I didn't care about impressing people with like, look how well I can draw anatomy. I just wanted to make people happy. So now I had a goal, right? I wanted to take what I could draw and take the skills I had and make pictures that would go out into the world and feel like a hug to the people on the other side. So I was thinking about my audience, right? It wasn't even all about me. And then the other thing about style is it happens naturally over time. It becomes the sum of everything you like and everything you don't like. And so I realized that I really liked like warm, warm tones, you know? I really liked mid-century stuff. I really liked round shapes and curves and curls and little flips. Um, but I didn't like things that were overly fussy. I didn't like things that felt like scratchy and aggressive. Um, that wasn't speaking to me. So over time, I just gradually weaned myself off those things. I weeded those things out of my style. And what was left was my style. And the funny thing about style is you probably won't realize when you hit on a signature style until sometime later. I didn't really realize that I had a style that was different from anyone else until a year or two after I'd been working consistently in that style. And I even have multiple styles. I have one that's like an old world fairy tale style that I use for a different type of story, you know, as needed. Um, so the biggest thing about developing style is just keep trying stuff and eventually it will happen. It's not something you can do over a weekend. It's not that it's something you can sit down and figure out right now. It's a process of discovery, just like learning to draw is. So I think knowing that will take off some of the, some of the time pressure. I hope that helps.